Hello, and welcome to this video on research ethics in Summonet. My name is Michael Boyland, I'm the ethics advisor for Summonet. In this video, we'll be talking about what research ethics is, why it's important, and how Summonet will be approaching it. We'll introduce the ethics principles for Summonet and talk through different roles and responsibilities. So let's get started. So first of all, we're going to talk about what research ethics actually means. Now, if we break down the phrase into its two words, research and ethics, and start with ethics, which are broadly the norms for conduct distinguishing between right and wrong or acceptable and unacceptable behavior in different societies, communities, or countries. Now, this obviously depends on context, depends on culture and other underlying social norms, but generally people will recognize some common ethical norms, but they may interpret apply and balance them in different ways in light of their own values and also their life experiences. And then research ethics is really the application of those ethical norms in the conduct of research in all of its forms from social science through to physical sciences. Now, ethics can also be considered a method, procedure and a perspective for deciding how to act and also for analysing complex problems. If we take climate change, for example, a very complex issue facing the whole world in different ways. Now, you could look at it from an economic analysis perspective where you may weigh the costs and benefits of different approaches to addressing climate change. But if you look at it from an ethical perspective, you may explore a different set of issues. For example, how addressing climate change can be done fairly and equitably across different countries and regions depending upon that contribution to the issue of climate change. So research ethics will also be interpreted depending on language and culture and now we'll listen to the term research ethics translated into six major languages in the Mekong region. <laughs> So that was research ethics translated into Myanmar, Thai, Vietnamese, Lao, Khmer and Mandarin. And that's just the translation of the phrase itself. The interpretation or understanding of what the phrase and words mean will be different in different countries and also within the country depending upon experiences and understanding of both ethics more broadly and also research. So now that we've introduced what research ethics means we're going to move on to consider why it's important for us to consider research ethics and also where it comes into our work within Summonet. So firstly it's important to follow ethical norms and standards in research for several reasons. First of all, they promote the general aims of research, which are the pursuit of knowledge, truth, and the avoidance of error. For example, following ethical norms should ensure that research data is not misrepresented. Second, following ethical norms promotes the values that are essential to collaborative research work, such as trust, accountability, mutual respect, and fairness. And this extends beyond the research methods themselves to for example, fairness in how authorship is decided and ensuring confidentiality in peer review processes for publication. And then third, ethical norms allows researchers to be held accountable, not only to themselves, but also to wider public and society. It really should ensure that there is no misconduct, conflicts of interest should be declared and avoided. And this all really helps to build public and community trust in research and science as we conduct it. So in Summonet we've been considering where research ethics is particularly important to the types of work and activities that we conduct together. And we've highlighted seven major areas on the screen now. So we, we start with really at the beginning when we're deciding what we do and do not work on. This is in the research design or the proposal development phase. And there are ethical considerations when both the Summonet 
steering committee and secretariat deciding what themes to focus on and also in the project teams for deciding what to propose. And then related to that is who we work with and how we choose to work with them. How collaborative will we be? Or how um, will the relationship perhaps be uh, one way, extracting data from a particular group or community, um, as opposed to perhaps co-designing the research. And then third is how we go about data collection and then using and storing that data once the data collection process is over. For example, are all notes transcribed and stored on a, on a safe hard drive or computer or are they accessible to people outside of the research team? Fourth is how we engage with boundary partners. So stepping a bit outside of who the research team involves and who the participants are, but also who we seek to work with and perhaps influence both in policy and practice. And then fifth is how we build capacity. And within Summonet, we're hoping to ensure that the research network's capacity is enhanced, both within project teams and wider society. And there are definitely ethical considerations in how we go about, for example, training exercises, capacity building activities. Sixth is how we communicate and disseminate the work. So we've conducted the research, we're looking to publish, whether it be a journal paper, a photo story or a blog. And the, the choices we make, both in the type of communication and also in the way we communicate, needs to be done in an ethical way. This includes, for example, the use of photos. And then finally, how we ensure the sustainability of our project outcomes. So after the timeline of the project is over, after the activities are done, what measures have we put in place to ensure that the outcomes sustain and persist beyond our time there? And how is it ensured to be done in an ethical way? So now we've introduced what ethics in research means, why it's important to the work we do and where it's relevant to Summonet. And now we're going to talk about the specific approach to ethics that Summonet is taking. There are two main parts to this approach. The first is the upholding of principles across all activities, project partners and teams. And second is the following of prescribed processes. In this video, we'll be focusing on the first of those, the principles that we seek to uphold in partnership with all of you. And we'll be going through what each might mean to the different activities and how they can be upheld in the context of your projects. Summonet has six ethics principles, integrity, respect, responsibility, competence, social equity, and ethical balance. Now, each of these may be understood and applied in different ways. So now we're going to talk through each of them in turn to explain a little bit about what we mean by those, these terms, and then suggest some questions which teams and activities may wish to consider to ensure that these principles are upheld. The first principle is that of integrity. This is about striving to achieve consistency in our intentions and our actions in all of the contexts in which we work. We should be ensuring we follow high standards of honesty and show commitment to the values of justice and fairness. This should be reflected across not just the participants and the informants, but the project teams and the boundary partners that we seek to engage. Now, there are many questions which the teams may consider internally to ensure that this principle is upheld. But here are a couple of examples. How exactly will we show integrity in each and every activity that we have planned, both within research, engagement, communications, for example? How will we know that the people we work with or gather data from sense that we are showing integrity? And then how exactly will our research be contributing to society, to an individual community, or perhaps to a country? And are we prepared to report and communicate our findings accurately and openly? The second principle is respect. This is to ensure that we acknowledge the humanity and dignity of others and their right to be who they are, treating people as you would like to be treated and seeking to understand others and appreciate their perspective. 
this is obviously extremely important when gathering data from participants, which you may be completely unfamiliar with. Working in context, you haven't worked before. Respect should still be shown at all times. It's about honoring the rights and privacy, the entitlements and the diversity of those contributing to research activities, as well as policy engagement and communication processes. So a couple of questions which you may want to ask yourselves before conducting research is, do we know enough about the context to respect all participants and stakeholders? And if not, how can we better account for local value, customs and practices? And are we respecting all human rights at all times? And if there are any limitations, have they been fully explained to all participants? The third principle is responsibility. This is about acknowledging your contribution to expected or observed outcomes and of our responsibility as researchers to people, teams and the wider society that have a stake in the research that we are conducting. In order to fulfill this principle, we feel that activities must be of value and of use to the participants that invest their time and energy into contributing, as well as the wider community or perhaps country in which the research is being conducted. Certainly, activities should be designed to minimise risks and maximise potential benefits. Participants must be duly informed of these risks and benefits prior to participating. So we may want to ask, is there any potential for our activities to harm the people that are participating? And if yes, what steps should be taken to ensure no harm? An example of this would be to make sure that informed consent is sought and documented for all participants, irregardless of how small or large their contribution may seem to be. And second, we may want to ask ourselves, is there a potential for our research findings to jeopardize either the project team, the participants, or a wider set of stakeholders? And if that's potentially true, what steps can we take to protect those groups? An important first step in this is to make sure all data gathered and presented is anonymous. The fourth principle is competence. This is to ensure that we're honest about what we're capable of and we commit to producing high quality work within the boundary of our expertise, but also striving for personal improvement. We want to consider a couple of issues here. Do the project teams have the skills to conduct the activities and deliver high quality outputs? And if not, what additional capacities might be needed? And where could those capacities be found? And this is where the Summonet Steering Committee and Secretariat is available to offer support to project teams who may be facing an ethical dilemma of competence. The second question we're suggesting that teams consider is how can they convey competence to the participants. And this is very important to building mutual understanding and trust between researcher and subject. And this really is not only for ethical reasons, but it also enhances the quality and the potential outcomes of the research. The fifth principle is social equity. Now this is obviously something we would like to see present in all the research designs, but it's actually also about how we conduct ourselves as researchers and as project teams and embodying the principle of social equity. This involves treating all participants with dignity and respect, as we've mentioned, and this is regardless of gender, age, race, ethnicity, ability, religion, culture, and other socio-economic characteristics which people may be discriminated for. This requires an understanding of power relations, cultural context, so the broader principles of human rights and addressing inequality and injustice can be upheld through our research activities. So we want to be asking ourselves, does our research design fairly represent the people, community and society being studied? And if some people have been left out, why may that be? And then how will we communicate our findings and recommendations not just to our peers, but also to all the participants and stakeholders that had a role within that research. 
The sixth and final principle is that of ethical balance. So we remain committed to these principles, but we also want to make sure that we acknowledge and respect potentially different perspectives within the context or the communities where we're conducting research. So we want to be asking how do our own ethical principles compare with those around us? And if they don't, how do we strike a balance to ensure that both parties are respected? And the second question is how we will carry these summon ethic principles forward in our work, in our research activities, in our policy engagement, in ways that are very mindful of the different views and values that we will come across in our work across the region. So, again, to summarize, Summonet has six ethics principles, integrity, respect, responsibility, competence, social equity, and ethical balance. So now that we've introduced these ethics principles for Summonet, we speak a little bit about the roles and responsibilities that different people and different institutions have. So the project leaders are responsible for the project, of course, and its team, to ensure that these principles are implemented and upheld to the highest possible standard in all activities. The Summonet Steering Committee has a responsibility to provide clear guidance, knowledge and training to support project leaders and their teams to deliver that high ethical research. The Summonet Secretariat will be supporting the Steering Committee in providing that guidance. The Secretariat will also be reviewing and approving different projects and proposals to give ethical clearance in accordance with the decision made by the Summonet Steering Committee for the Secretariat to take on this role. But overall, we are all responsible for practicing and upholding good ethical practice in Summonet, whether we're inside or outside of the network. If we're conducting research in the region, it's important that we do so ethically. There are many resources available on the subject of research ethics. You can find details of some of these in the Summonet Ethics Guide available on the Summonet website. But I'd just like to highlight that most countries have national ethics committees or boards, as well as guidelines which must be followed for research being conducted in those countries which involve people or human subjects in any way. The details are on the screen and they are also available on the Summonet website. Thank you for watching and please do get in touch if you have any questions or issues you would like to discuss. You can reach me at michael.boyland at sei.org or post your comments in the comment section below this video. Thank you.